3.8 hours we have our first failure welcome back up on the mountain today it's a little bit rainy so we're going to do some mini excavator maintenance looks like we have a little creek running down our road here uh-oh i see a problem we have a slight little puddle here we got to get that sorted out and we have we have some water cutting right across the road that's got to get solved all right today we're going to work on the uh mini excavator when i was digging yesterday this handle got really loose this one it's just barely loose like it moves oh i don't know maybe a quarter inch but this one flops a good couple inches and what happens is while you're digging it's back on the blade uh, this actually pulls the boom up and down so it bounces a little bit and the boom just starts coming up automatically even if you're not touching this handle so when you're like driving with the with the track controls here all of a sudden the boom just starts coming up that's not good so we need to take that apart and see what's going wrong and not get rained on. All right, the first step would be to pull these little screws out under here, get this rubber boot out of the way. And we can see if there's anything obviously wrong. I'm sure there is. So the rain keeps coming down. I think they said like 90% rain today. I think we're getting every bit of that. All right, I don't know if we've ever pulled this boot off before. I hope there's not like a nut or something on the bottom that's going to fall into the bowels of the machine. Looks like we can get to these okay. I know you guys can't see anything while I'm doing this. With any luck, we can just pull this rubber boot up and get to whatever we need to. But most likely we're going to have to take this whole dash panel apart. And last time we did that, that wasn't a lot of fun. But I think we've learned a little bit since then. All right, let's get this boot up out of the way. See if we can invert it a little bit. Let's see if we can see anything obviously loose. It's not good. So I was expecting to find some of these linkages loose in here, but that doesn't seem to be the case. There's this uh, front valve right here that when you move it up and down, it actually moves quite a bit in the plunger, so that's not good. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what it's supposed to do. But there's a lot of play right there in the middle. Well, that's not good. We're going to have to look into this further. All right, we pulled up the boot on the other side. And when I try to move the stick over here, that front plunger has a very definite centering on it. That is not what's happening over here. This side, uh, if I get the view correct, hold on. This side, that front plunger has quite a bit of travel in and out. And no good centering. All right, we relocated inside the tractor barn. I figured it would be better to have the excavator inside since we have to take off this cover plate and we have to get into the hydraulic cylinders. They're actually hydraulic valves, cylinders, same thing. Took all the screws out of the top up here. We have a couple more on the side to pull out before we can liberate this thing. Liberate, is that the right word? I don't know. And I don't have the optimal Allen wrench for this. I was hoping to get one on the end of a screwdriver so I could turn it nicely, but it is what it is. I also apologize about the lighting situation. It's a little dark in here. I think we have one more screw right here and then we're good. Yeah, we need to invest in a good set of metric Allen wrenches. Right now, I just have a big bucket of Allen wrenches. And every time you need one, you kind of have to go fishing. And it's a mix of metric and SAE. You never know what you're going to get. Come on. Come on, screw. 
This is like putting together IKEA furniture with that little Allen wrench that they give you. All right. Now, unfortunately, the cover plate that we just released is attached by a wiring harness, so I don't know if I can get it all the way out of the way. Uh, I think we'll just lean it back and hope for the best. So this cover plate still will not come off until you remove these short little handles, and it looks like it's a 16 millimeter wrench under here, and they're not very tight. Yeah, in fact, all of those were loose. So we might be able to get those a little bit tighter also. Three of those to remove. You guys took a tumble there. I hope you're okay. You got to be careful working around equipment. So it looks like we're going to be able to extend these knobs if we want a little bit. There's a little bit of a threaded area that you can, well, extend the knobs. And I think with any kind of luck, we can pull these plastic bushings off, get them out of the way. And now this metal piece should be able to lift up over the top. Get the boots down through the middle. So I thought the culprit was going to be just these little adjuster nuts here, but it's not. It's the entire piston moving up and down inside the, the thing. So we're going to have to pull these cap screws off right here and see what happened to the spring inside. None of the other ones do that. I mean, they're all kind of janky. And we may look to put better bolts in some of those. But this is what it should be like over here. This one is nice and tight. So I'm not sure. See how it pops in and out? This one... This one like wobble snobbles. So let's go ahead and loosen that thing up, see if we can slide it out, see what happens. All right, so we took the three nuts off of this uh, tower unit, and I don't know if there's gonna be enough clearance to get this thing out of here. And I know I can't do it while I'm holding the camera. So we may have to, oh, we may have to take it apart up here on the top. All right, after a little bit of rotating around and disassembly, we were able to get that tower off of there. So this is the guy that's the problem. See that movement there? Shouldn't be like that. It should be like this. Very little. So I guess we got to pull that cap off and see what's broken on the inside. Probably going to be a spring or something that we can't fix, but we got to look at it. All right, we're going to do the right thing and clean this thing up as much as possible before we take this lid off. Don't want to get any dirt down in there. A little bit of red dirt and rust. It's pretty awesome. Good enough. All right, let's pull out these Allen screws right here and hope for the best. So that's that's not good. So I'm just slowly pull these things out. See what it looks like. Try not to drop any of this stuff. So these are all the screws and things we have out so far. Seems about right. All right, so it doesn't come straight out the top. Most likely these things are reversible. See this cap right here? See the cap on this one? There's a valve just like this on the bottom. So I bet we have to pull the cap off the bottom and there's gonna be a nut under there. And I bet that nut came loose. That's what I'm guessing. So it does mean we need to pull a few more screws out to get this front panel gone. Let me get that done, then we'll take a look at it. All right, we got the screws off for the bottom panel, front panel. Uh-oh, that didn't help us much. We have a steel plate right there. All right, looks like we're going to have to go about this the hard way by reaching inside here and get these, uh, well, the second cover plate needs to come off. 
Look at this janky setup. We have a, we have a, oh, I don't even know what that is. It looks like a bent threaded rod hooking to that middle piston. That's pretty janky. All right, let me see if I can get those cover plates off. All right, I took off this top cover just to show you what we're up against. That's the same situation we're gonna have on the bottom. Um, the cover plate comes off. It looks like we have a spring, a spring that interacts with this thing here. And there's an Allen wrench on the inside. So either that Allen wrench is loose or the spring is broken. I would guess the Allen wrench is loose. So let's keep tearing into it. All right, we have the cover off in here and it does feel like perhaps something is broken. Can't really tell what. If I push the seal down, it goes down. We don't know, we're gonna have to take it apart. As expected, the, uh, the spring, that Allen wrench bolt into that spring is loose. I currently have an Allen wrench on it. And luckily we can just spin the rod here on the top to help tighten it up. Now I can just hold the top here with a crescent wrench and try to put some pressure on the bottom, but I'm not sure how much torque I can get on that thing. And I'm not sure why it came loose in the first place. All right, we got all those bottom bolts tightened up. The good news is it is not moving up and down anymore. So let's put the control stick tower back on it and see how it works. I'm still not happy with all the play in this, uh, those are the, the track controls. I don't know if we should put bolts in here instead. Get rid of these janky looking pins. Anything would be better than that. Putting this control tower back together is pretty straightforward. Just get the nuts on this side started. Don't drop it. Oh my God, we almost dropped it. Not good. Not good at all. There we go. We got those started. Now I did have to remove this tower bolt over here to get it in there correctly. And we have our other tower support started. Let's get this nut started. And now we're gonna to torque all this stuff down and give it a try. I didn't wanna get anything tight until we get the uh, handle back on, but I can tell already that it's not doing what it was doing before. So that's good. All right, we have the control tower all put back together. The handles are lined up and very little movement. Actually, this side has more movement than the one we just worked on. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering if maybe the, the spring on the bottom of one of these is, no, it looks like the movement, the movement's just in this linkage here, not in the, the piston itself. So we'll say that's good enough. I'm glad it was something minor. Now we have about an hour's worth of work figuring out where all this hardware goes and getting these cover plates back on. But before I do that, I'm gonna put a wrench on all these bolts in here just to make sure they're tight-ish. Something I'm noticing while putting all these panels back on, all these little hex screws in here, don't tighten any of them up until you get all back put together. Just put them in fairly loose so you can jiggle it around some or you're gonna be taking it back apart anyway. And even if you do everything just right, you're still gonna end up with one or two screws that aren't happy. So like this one, I don't even know where it is. Let's see if I can use the camera to help. I can see the hole up in there somewhere. So we gotta pull it forward and up. But with enough patience and determination, you will get them all lined up. And then make sure to go around and retighten all the all the screws that we didn't tighten before. And you'll probably find there's at least one or two that are stripped out and will never tighten, but that's good enough. Now we need to put our boots back on, put our little knobs back on, and we're ready to give it a test. Now when you get to put these rubber boots back on, the plastic backing plate goes on top and then there's a screw that goes through the rubber on all four corners. Make sure to get the screws in all the holes before you start tightening them up or else that rubber will never line up. Ask me how I know. And once you get them all started, you can push the controls away from the screw you're working on to give you a little bit better shot at getting everything straight. 
And you just want to make sure that the rubber gasket is flush all the way around before you tighten up that screw. Ask me how I know that. Now with any kind of luck, installing the second boot will go much smoother than the first one. And assuming you didn't drop any hardware or tools down inside the uh, hydraulics bay, we're ready to put on all the short sticks. Now they're pretty easy, they thread on, and we're going to try to extend them slightly from what they were. I don't know if that's a good idea, but we're going to do it anyway. Alright, we were able to extend these middle controls just enough to make absolutely no difference at all. Um, let's get the boots aligned, that looks pretty good. I'm really happy with the way this came out. This one is about the same as it was. So we'll say that's successful. Now on the downside, it's looking pretty dark outside. I was going to move the Kubota back inside and put the excavator back in its spot. But I think we'll just leave everything well enough alone. We want to clean up all of our tools and give it a test run really quick to see if it does what we think it should do. Works like it should. I don't know. One more quick check around. Make sure we don't have any screws or bolts laying around that we forgot about. Looks like everything's accounted for. Perfect. All right, let's give this thing a try. First step is to turn on the battery switch. You hear a fan running, that's good. Over on this side, we'll give it a little choke. Turn the key. Uh-oh. It started up about like you would expect. All right, looks like the uh, boom control works pretty good. Centers nicely. The stick control works pretty good. Bucket in and out. Crawling forward. Crawling back. Blade up and down. Works good. Got to make sure to turn off our battery switch. Check. Well, it's pretty wet out here today, so we're going to do the right thing and head back to the barn. You guys get outside or stay inside and do something fun. Come back and tell me about it.